Hello, friends, and welcome to your podcast, Get Plugged In. This is a ministry from Annenslow Park Presbyterian Church located in Huntington, West Virginia. This is our second season of the show, and we are thrilled to be back and talk with ordinary people like you and me about how Jesus Christ has worked in their lives during good and bad moments, how their faith has built their strength to overcome a difficult time, and how they receive the blessings from God. Each episode, we will, uh, we will have a special guest, and today's show, we receive our friend, Reverend Sharon Bell, who is the minister at High Long Presbyterian Church. Thank you, Sharon, for being here with us today. Well, thank you. I am so glad to be here today. Uh, glad to talk with you about life and ministry and scripture and whatever else comes up. Oh, absolutely. Isn't I mean, I think that's the most gorgeous day that I've seen, you know, in a few years past. It's beautiful outside. Uh, and uh, just God, you know, is blessing us with this beautiful weather and this nice conversation that you're going to have here today. So uh, to just break the ice, Sharon, uh, introduce yourself. Tell uh, about you, you know, how you became a minister. What and when did you, you know, when did you receive this, the, your call? Oh boy. Well, how long do you have? I have been ordained since 2003. I've had a very long and interesting call process. I would say my call really began when I was 16. I was actually at Montreat in North Carolina with my church youth group on a youth trip there for a conference. And it was during the PEN, the Presbyterian Association of Musicians, or no? No, Different, no. Okay. Something for youth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. I can't remember. It's been a few years ago since I was 16. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had just, you know, this wonderful week. And it's a very spiritually high experience to begin with. And while I was there, I was 16, getting ready to go into my senior year of high school and contemplating what I was going to do with my life. And, you know, when you're 16, there's a lot of pressure on you to decide then and know for sure. Life But, pressure calls parents, right? Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I, while we were at the conference, I had this experience that I say had to be God because there is no other explanation for it. I had this experience where I heard God speak as clearly as if it was audibly is how I describe it and heard Sharon, I am calling you into ministry. And I was over overwhelmed, overcome with emotion and just un not disbelief, but just shock, I uh -huh, guess that yeah. that had, had just happened. I know it sounds strange that people hear God speak like that, but I am confident that that's what it was. That was during the, during the conference, the conference. At, during the worship service there. And I am very thankful for that for many reasons. One of which it gave me direction to say, okay, This is what I'm going to do with my life. And I looked at a lot of my other peers at that age who didn't know, didn't have that certainty, which is totally normal. Who mm -hmm. Most people do not know when they're that age, what yeah. they want to be and do for the rest of their lives. And so I just took the next step and said, well, okay. So then after high school, I went to Baylor University where I majored in religion and That was a very interesting experience because I was a young woman who felt called to ministry at a Southern Baptist school where women were not encouraged in ministry. And I remember, in fact, when I was in a smaller class and it was called Intro to Ministry, and there was about 12 people in the class, I'd say, and we sitting around a table and the professor had each person go around and say, well, tell us about what kind of ministry you feel called to do. And there were all these 
young 20 year old guys in the class and one, oh, I feel called to youth ministry or I want to be a senior pastor and so on and so forth. Well, they came around and they went to the first woman and she said, listen, I don't really want to be a minister. I'm really interested in religion as a subject and I want to study it from a literature perspective and an academic you know, standpoint. And they said, okay, great. We're glad you're here. Then the next young woman says, well, I feel called to be a pastor's wife. And I will tell you, I blurted out laughing, which was terrible. I know. But I leaned over to this other woman and I said, well, I feel called to be a millionaire's wife. Like, (laughs) I didn't know this was an option to be called to the spouse of something, you know. (laughs) And then I said, well, I feel called to be a minister. They said, oh, a children's minister. And I said, no. They're like, oh, like to do a women's ministry. Mm, no. And the professor was just like, well, okay. And he moved on. And I remember thinking, hmm, I had never experienced this. I grew up in a Presbyterian church. We had a woman associate pastor for many years while I was there. In fact, until I went to a Southern Baptist school, I did not realize that there were denominations that did not ordain women. Uh So, uh, Overall, though, that was a very good experience for me. And then from there, I went to Fuller Seminary in Los Angeles. Okay. And um, I had a great experience at Fuller. And then when I finished there, I took a call to uh, the Taze Valley Church, which is in Putnam County. Wow. Which is where we live now still. So. Oh, from Los Angeles straight to Putnam County. Yes. Wow. Yes. That was quite an adjustment. I can I came here for a few visits, uh-huh. you know, for an interview, to meet with the presbytery, to find a place to live. And I think looking back, I didn't know. i had always lived in big cities. I grew up in Houston, then I lived in Los Angeles, and then I moved here. And I did not know what I didn't know. Mm-hmm. It was a big shock. So a few months after being here, I was like, I hate it. I'm miserable. I want to leave. Uh-huh. I want to find a new call. And the folks in the Presbytery were like, okay, but give it some time. And I did. And obviously it, it, it stuck after a while. Well, so. that's interesting. So, uh, so when uh, that uh, seminar at the Montreat uh, or youth retreat, uh, where, where were you? Where, um, where were you leaving that time? In Texas. Texas. Yes. So, That's where I grew up in Houston. And you were Presbyterian there mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. So, you, of course, you knew Mount Montreat. Well, not really so much because every region really seems to have one retreat center that uh-huh. people seem to gravitate towards. In Texas, there's a beautiful retreat center called Mo Ranch, M O. Okay. And that's where we usually grew up going for. Weekend uh, retreats, uh, okay. and seems like most people in Texas, Presbyterians, go to Mo Ranch. On the East Coast, or especially the Southeast, yes. people go to Montreat. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had done like a special kind of a trip where we took one week where we drove from Texas to North Carolina and did mission work, mm-hmm. and our uh, little youth choir toured along the way. Oh, cool. Up to Montreat. We went to Montreat youth conference for a week and then drove back. So it was, it was, it was. But the thing is, uh, when I, I went to Montreal this past year for the pen and uh, I met people from, you know, all over the place, you know, even Los Angeles. Yeah. You know, so, and, and uh, they were talking, well, the Presbyterian there is not as strong as, uh, or as many as in here on the East side. Is part absolutely so, and I was feel man, you. I mean, you flew all the way here. Do they don't have those kind of things there? Say, eh, not like here. So it, it's interesting, you know. And you are you, you came from Texas, and uh, and then you 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 receive your call in Montreal. That's because you you've been part of the Mo Ranch, mm-hmm. and you know, till then nothing. You've been there for a few times, but nothing. But in Montreal, you you heard a call. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think it's also partly how God works with just the right setting and the right, right time. time. You know, if I had been 12 and God had said, 
I'm calling you to ministry. I'm not certain I would have understood or know, known what to do. Yeah. That was the right moment, of course, in my life. Really couldn't have been more perfect as far as That's interesting. knowing when to follow God's call. It's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. I, I'm very, I feel very blessed, honestly. And I also feel like God had to be that direct. I, I, you know, when you go through the ordination process in the Presbyterian church, they ask you a lot, tell me about your sense of call. Uh-huh. That's our, seems to be their favorite phrase, your sense of call. And I always come back to this experience and it wasn't just Obviously, there were things after that that affirmed that call, uh-huh. but that was the initial moment that really kicked it off for me. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful place there. Montreal. Absolutely. It's an amazing place. And I, I understand why you received the call right there. That was a oh, well, anyway. Uh, well, that's a great uh, insight about your calling, you know, uh, your youth and how you receive the word of God. and. Uh, I'm really looking forward to hear what you say about your scripture that you chose. But before we go to the scripture, let's have a prayer. Let's go to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful day that you shed your blessing upon these people, upon this place here with this beautiful, warm day. We thank you for Sharon and her ministry in this area, she received the call to be a minister in this area to these people. We are all happy to have her here and glad that she answered your call. Thank you all. We thank you, God, for the health, for the plans that you have in our lives, that you work in a mysterious way. And uh, it's really important to know and to respect to give a great time for your wisdom. And meanwhile, you feed us all the blessings that you have shed upon your people. Thank you, Lord, and bless this uh, conversation by the Holy Spirit. And through the Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, Cheryl, uh, could you read uh, the passage that you chose to our listeners, please? Absolutely. This is from Matthew chapter 14. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and I'm going to start reading at verse 22. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was with them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, "You, truly, you are the Son of God." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. Oh, I love this passage. I just love this passage. I'd like to uh, hear from you your insights about this. All this situation that we you just read. <laughs> well, there's so much good stuff in it, isn't I know, there? I I, know. I could preach five sermons on this passage, but I've always loved this. I love pretty much anything Peter does, I love because I feel like of all the disciples, he is the one that is the most relatable. He is the most action 
oriented disciple almost that you we see, uh, at least how he is recorded. Even though he denied him. Right. That's an action. Exactly. Yeah. There's so, he's doing something, yes. whether it's good or bad. He is exactly. he is actively involved in what's happening around Jesus. Uh -huh. um, that's one reason that, that I think many people, myself included, are so drawn to him because because of that, mm -hmm. because of his imperfection, mm -hmm. which is what makes him so relatable. Um, I love this message for so many reasons, but one of which is first, Jesus is walking on water. Like let's start with let, that. Let's start with that. <laughs> that could be enough in and of itself, right? Mm -hmm. And full and stop there. But it's not a hoax. I mean, he had witnesses. Right. We have a boat full of disciples. Right. Yeah. And presumably people even watching from the shore or something as well. I mean, something's happening here. This is a big event. Mm -hmm. And so he's coming out. And of course, they think it's a ghost because surely in their mind, that is the most logical explanation, oh, yeah. which I think we would probably think as well. Like, my eyes deceiving me or what's, yeah, you know, playing tricks accurate. on me. Mm -hmm. Surely. A person does not walk on water. So what's uh, happening here? Exactly. Um, but what I love is how Jesus first tells them, don't be afraid. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. He recognizes that they're afraid. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and then Peter, instead of anybody else, jumps right out. Lord, if it's you, command me to come out on the water. And Jesus tells him, come. And Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water. I mean, this is like doubling down on the miracle, mm -hmm. in my opinion. It's one thing for the Son of God to be able to walk on water. But now Peter is able to participate in this miracle. and. This is one of those things that's so amazing that it's almost like this is what Jesus does to us in life, in ministry especially, maybe. He says, come join me. Come out here and participate in this miracle also. And we're like, okay, let's go. And, and the cool thing is when people outsiders see, how can you do that? You say, I don't know. I have no clue, but I did. You know, so this yeah. is how, how like uh, Peter here says, if he's is you, Lord, you know, let me go like you're doing. Let me walk. OK, sure. And the others that in the boat say, what? He's walking in the water like 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 Jesus doing it? because he said, OK, I go with you. Yeah. And it, it, you know, we can't know for sure what's in Peter's mind. But we don't get the sense that. He says, I want to be like you in the, in the sense of, I want to be godlike, mm -hmm. but I want to experience this amazing superhuman, supernatural experience. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's the thing that one of the things that strikes me is that God invites us to come and join him. Uh-huh in the midst of these exciting things that he's doing. But then of course we know it says when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. Began yeah. To that's sink. one person that I'd like to uh, start talking here, yeah. um, asking uh, his translation here says, but when he noticed the strong wind, I mean, for me, it sounds like the wind was there. But he was so into that moment, he didn't realize that. Or maybe he, that's not a big deal because he, most of them, they were sailors. They were fishermen. So they were used with that. But Peter was like, and then when he noticed the wind, he became frightened. So, and if you move, so that's the first point I'd like to ask you. So when Peter was in that position, he noticed the, 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 the wind. So do you think he realized he was walking on water when he noticed that? Mm. Or he was, I mean, he was completely out of himself. 
you know, I have always looked at it like when when Jesus says, come, and he starts to step out, and he's uh-huh. walking on the water, and he's walking towards Jesus, suddenly he notices the strong wind. It's like he's looking away from Jesus. Mm-hmm. Something has pulled his attention yeah. away. And that little bit of fear started to creep in, which made him start to sink and probably then made him more afraid and made him start to sink. And, you know, there's something. So in the we, moment, no, I got it. But the, the, that's the cool thing, because in the moment, I know we know, you know, the wind in the ocean, you know, may change, you know, like a, instantly, real fast, uh, but not maybe in that region, because you're talking about the sea was not a sea, it's like a, a big lake. Mm-hmm. But uh, in here, uh, when Jesus said, yes, come, he completely forgot about all the adversities, the wind. He just, you know, step on the water and start to going. So. It, was, it says it was bad enough that the boat was battered by the waves mm-hmm. far from the land. Yeah. So. In that moment, he has enough faith to just step right out in the middle of this storm. Uh-huh. That's perfect. Yeah. And and then he notices what's actually happening around him. Like, oh my gosh, I'm walking on the water with Jesus. <laughs> like, and I'm sure there were no words to to describe, it, to describe that. what that feeling must have been like. And that's what you said, you know, something caught him up, say, hey, what am I doing here? You know, removed his focus from Jesus to, and then, say, wait, I'm in the middle of the ocean. Maybe, I, I, we don't know if he could, if he could swing or not. Mm-hmm. So he was frightened in that moment. And then, you know, he started to sing. Right. And then, help me, Lord. And then he says, help me, Lord. And then it says, uh, that Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him. And I just love that, that he doesn't wait for Peter to be like, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't have enough faith. Forgive me, Lord. And then Jesus pulls him up. He doesn't wait for him to have some perfect profession of faith. Right. He doesn't, you know, Peter doesn't, have to really say anything other than Lord save me, Lord help me. And immediately Jesus lifts him up and saves him. Then he says, You have a little faith. But he rescues him first. Yeah. Yes. And I like that, you know, this immediately action from Jesus, according to Matthew here. And you are right. He he was not, you know, Jesus was not like a okay. A little bit more about that. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 come here. And then he can, you little faith. Now, let's move on a little bit here because that's interesting to me. Um, uh, why you doubt, you know, that's what Jesus asked him. So, and then on verse 32 says, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. A coincidence? Or? Why didn't the wind cease when Peter was walking? Exactly. Yeah. Or so if I mean we know Jesus was, you know, is God. And he could rebuke the winds. Look up see. Right. Okay, done. And everything calmed down. So do you think he tried Peter at that moment? The wind? And then when they got, you know, safe, the wind ceased. Mm. Well, I think point. he definitely let Peter experience that. Mm-hmm. You know, because if if he had made the wind, if he had made it so that there were no winds, yeah. it would have been, I guess, easier for Peter to walk on the water. So he doesn't make it easy before Peter can participate in this miracle mm-hmm. and in this really test of faith. He he says, you want to come? Come. Not Oh, let me make it easy for you. Yeah. Let me clear everything out of the way. Uh-huh. Now, here is your golden path to walk on. He invites him to come into the chaos. And then 
And then once they get on the boat, the wind ceases. I mean, it's, I mean, you should be, Peter has to be like, really? Yeah. You couldn't have done this five minutes ago when I was standing out there feeling like I was about to drown. He said, no. But no. No. But that's, yeah. the, that's maybe how we, uh, God, you know, tests us sometimes when you say, I can't go further or I have a trouble and, you know, I need some answer. But God put things in your life to say, hey, you are strong, you are capable, and you can do that. Because, um, you know, just like Jesus said, you know, pick up your cross and follow me. And God gives you the right cross for you to carry. And that's the, 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 the cool thing. When, when Peter got this moment and he came back to the boat, you know, the wind seized. <laughs> Say, well, if, I'm, if I did this for maybe, I don't know, two minutes or one minute or 30 seconds, I could walk there in, in the mid, I mean, I could walk on water. I could do any, anything. Right. But that, I think that's a great example how we, we could see you know, after, after the storm, we have this calm time. And every time we go through, you know, a turbulent time, we have this, you know, we breathe in and say, huh, it was easier than I thought. Mm -hmm. And I always think about, you know, in my life, the times when I feel like, oh, I, I see God doing something really cool. I want to be a part of that. And I want to join that or even... You know, I want to become a minister. And yeah. Jesus says, come. And then I jump out of the boat, out of my safety net. I think of m moving from Los Angeles to West Virginia as a perfect example. Mm, Jesus sure. said, come. And I'm like, okay, great. And I get here and I'm, you know, not walking on water, but I'm in a moment that I thought I might never be, you know, experiencing all of this. And Soon, I start to feel like I'm sinking. I'm noticing the waves around me, and the waves can be anything in our lives. Yes. You know, health challenges, financial challenges, you know, loneliness, family, whatever, work. And it feels like you're going under. And I love that, that all you have to do is say, Lord, help me. And... Provide. He provides. Now, sometimes he might give you a little chastisement afterwards, like, why didn't you believe? Why didn't you ask for help sooner? But that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that he, he is there waiting as soon as, whenever we're ready to ask for help, that he's there to help us. It's, and, and, how, and how great, you know, his wisdom, you know, God's wisdom, when, uh, when you ask for something, and, you know, especially these days when we, you know, oh, I want food, you type and you order food by in your cell phone. Yes. Uh, and with God, it's not like that. I say, oh, like this. You know, say, wait, okay, I got you. Got you. Okay. I'm going to send you in the right time, in the right moment. You're going to rejoice. Yes. I'll tell you, my experience coming to the High Lawn Presbyterian Church has been a ex perfect example of that. You were, what, what, what's your congregation before that? Well, I'll tell you, I, I had, I've had several gaps in my ministry life. Uh -huh. Before I came to High Lawn, a few years ago, I served uh, kind of on an interim basis, really the United Church of Christ congregation okay. here in Charles or in Huntington. And I left that church and thought, okay, I'm going to start circulating my PIF, my ministry profile, and find a call in the Presbyterian Church. Okay. Well, I put it out there and put it out there and waited and wait, waited. Wait. And came close with a couple of churches. You know, some we decided were not right for us. Some I was not right for them. And it was a very long, long process and ultimately took almost three years from start to finish. And in fact, I started looking when this church called their interim okay. minister. And I thought for a minute about applying for the interim position. And I thought, no, I don't think I want to do that. And we were... 
I was willing to relocate anywhere, <laughs> anywhere. My, I don't have a lot of roots here in West Virginia, but my wife li- has lived within a two mile radius most of her life. Oh, okay. We, her parents live a mile from us. Now she did move to Charlotte for about 10 years when she was younger, but um, we have three daughters that have grown up and are in college or out of college. And so they were Ooh. not necessarily, we didn't have to be here for them oh, okay. anymore. And we were open to going anywhere, but she really wanted to stay in this area. And so in that process of waiting and saying, okay, God, I think this is what you've called me to do, but uh-huh. we're kind of waiting. I'm kind of looking. And at the time, then of course, COVID hit. Yeah. And then I said, thank God I am not a pastor during COVID. <laughs> yeah. I know that sounds terrible, but it was so hard. I saw my friends who were ministers trying to figure out how to do church and have church mm-hmm. in the midst of the pandemic. And I was like, Ooh, well, it dodged. I'm glad. I said, I'm going to wait till this thing's totally off, totally over. So I went online to take my profile off the system. Okay. And I said, well, before I do, I'm just going to look one more time, yeah. see if there's anything local, <laughs> anything local. Well, the church in Highland had just posted a week or so before. Huh. And I said, oh, I knew as soon as I saw it, as soon as I read their profile, I know that sounds strange, but I knew this was going to be the place for me Hmm. and came home and told my wife. And I said, Kim, this is, I think I found a really good place. I'm going to send my stuff into. And she said, okay. And so, (laughs) you know, we went from there. Uh All of that came from somewhere that I was talking about a minute ago. Yeah. (laughs) Remember, but partly about trusting God and waiting on God. Yes. And that even though we may say, help me Lord, like Peter does in that moment. And we're expecting an immediate response. Mm -hmm. God has responded immediately in God's time. Yeah. Sometimes we just have to wait, wait on that time. And I'm so glad I did because when I look at those other positions that, I thought, oh, this would be perfect for me. I'm glad. Really? Yeah, they've all had either troubles or we would have to move to some place that would have been a financial burden for us and all kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. And we have been honestly so blessed at this church. This is probably the first church I have been in. And I hate to say this because of people in my other churches, but there is such an overwhelming feeling of love between the people and a feeling of support and very little bickering Uh between people on the sides, which is unfortunately unusual in church life. Yeah. (laughs) Even in the best of congregations, there's a lot of parking lot meetings. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> am i wrong you know exactly what i mean you have a meeting in the church and then you have another yeah. meeting in the parking lot <laughs> that's true and 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 i agree with you because um um when we came here before we moved to huntington we live in in bloomington indiana and and there is like it, it's a, a university city mm-hmm. you know, like a just un, uh, indiana university is a city itself uh but when we came here we felt so welcomed by these people here i'll say oh damn i'm glad that you're here you know they are always interesting why you guys would come to west virginia yeah (laughs) and you lived you know you spent some years in los angeles with a completely different head in a way of view things and then you come here and you found great place people that you know love you and support you that's important and i think that's uh, is the overall of huntington uh, it's a great city. It's people here are lovely, and uh, we had the opportunity to go, you know, deeper in the mountains and down low. And I don't have words to describe how that people are. You know, I love them, what they do, their ministry there, and how they care about people, mm. regardless, brain, you know, gender, race, whatever. So we are here because we are Christians. We just we are doing what you know Christ taught us to do, and then. Uh, coming back to the passage here, um, 
I would like to um, highlight a passage that was uh, I'm really like every time the gospel uh, mentioned when Jesus oh after a long day of you know preaching Jesus mm -hmm. went to a mountain or went by himself to pray. I think these moments of praying after doing all that work you know he walked a lot. Not you know, like in these like Nike shoes. No, ah. it was a sandals and you know, bare you know pavement. Not pavement. Is it like a, uh, I mean, rough road. And then after all this, his ministry, he went there and prayed. He had a time with the Almighty. How important do you think it's our daily prayer by mm. ourselves? Do you have this routine? To you know, have a time after your ministry, you know, get home and pray by yourself, or you ask somebody to join your prayers. How 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 that you know this impact? You know, every time you read this, and Jesus went there and prayed by himself. How do you do this in your life? Yeah, that's a really good point, Rodrigo. I I guess I I never really thought of it that way as far as having time of prayer after ministry. I think of a lot of prayer before mm -hmm. like on my way to church on Sunday morning I'm praying over what's the sermon in the Sunday school and whatever else you know is going on in my mind but I will say when I come home on what on Sunday afternoons I have decided and just declared it that there will be nothing productive done on my part the rest of the day because I just feel physically and emotionally and spiritually oh, wiped out. Yeah. Like I've given it all I had. And honestly, if I didn't, that would probably be more problematic because I want to give everything I have for that. But it did not occur to me to use that time to be by myself, to pray, to allow myself to be, build back up hmm. but, i don't know why that really <laughs> no, i understand you know you. i think i i understand you you know and 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 you mentioned that you have uh three kids and uh and i'm uh, exercising this with my four-year-old every time we go to bed we read a book and then we say let's pray let's pray let's have a prayer and then we when we start praying you know i it's like a childish prayer that you know, for him to understand and then i come to my prayer and i ask you know i i i I thank God for the beautiful day, for whatever, like a worse day, but I say thank you for the beautiful day, uh, for, you know, experience that. And uh, thank you for my family. Thank you for everything, for my prayer. And then, um, but this because every time I was reading the uh, gospel, I always, I was interested by, and then uh, he, where is that? When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the, oh no, is this, Oh, I forgot here. He went there to, up to the mountain by himself to pray. Um, but of course, if he was by himself, people would not listen. What kind of prayer is that? Mm -hmm. you know? But in this moment, as by yourself, so that's how I would like to know if you do this, you know, in your regular day, your ministry, uh, at the end of the day. And then you, mm. you just, you know, mention that well sometimes you do sometimes you don't. yeah i more do probably the opposite mm -hmm. of uh prayer beforehand day. yes because i am one of these not exactly a morning person but okay. i have the most energy within the first once i get my coffee in me in the morning uh -huh. after that within the first two to three hours and then my Yes. My attentiveness, productivity, openness to prayer just pretty much goes downhill from there. And by the end of the day, I'm like, you know, part zombie, just like bleh, sit on the couch and, you know, your it's eyes kind of glaze over or yeah. fall asleep or something. And we also have an eight year old son. And so oh it's, you know, just daily life can wear you out, ministry, whatever you're doing. And I think that is a good, good practice. Obviously, it was good for Jesus. It would be good for us to, yeah. <laughs> to take time at the end of the day. Um, I have also learned, though, that 
you have to find the thing that works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a time in my life when I was younger, when there's no way I could have had any kind of spiritual anything in the morning that I, I was a more evening person Mm -hmm. and I would have a much better devotional time if I did it in the evening. Now, if I wait to the evening, I'm like, love you, Jesus. Night. You know, and that's it. Like, I, I can't, you know, my, my dad and we have implemented this rule. No important deci- decisions or discussions happen after 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. And the same kind of goes for my spiritual life. Like, if you asked me to have this conversation at nine o'clock tonight, I'd be like, um, I don't know. I love Jesus. Like, what else can I say? Like, I'm just. but. I think that is a good idea and a good. Yeah. It's it's interesting like, because, and and I you know I was every time I read say, you know it, it, you has this long story of you know, mm. what Jesus was doing and they say man he was in the middle of the dead you know he has all these people it's not you know you know it's a rough path he's walking he's walking he's not like in a camel or whatever he's walking and then he got a time for him and God you know just to pray that's amazing and. Um, that's it's just I'm just wondering, you know, uh, how you do who, how is that you what you do? That? Do you have times of prayer after you have had like a spiritually draining? Well, I normally I tend to do this at night, you know, and uh, of course in the, the morning my prayer is the opposite. You no, know? thank you for one more day. You okay. know, let's let's go, on. let's rock and roll. Uh, but during the night, you know, I make kind of do a review of the whole day. You know, what was good, what was bad. You know, I think that I think that so. And it's good because my son is, you know, paying attention. And that's cool because, you know, he's like, a, if yeah. kids are amazing. If if you start reading a book and they know by heart, I mean, the second time you read the same book, they know by heart. If you skip a page, wait, 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 mm-hmm. you're skipping a page. Not, not that. And, and, and so they are all attentive until I say, have a good night. When I say have a good night, it's like he turn off, take off. A, oh. And <laughs> you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you know we try to you know he doesn't sleep during the days, but uh, at night when I say good night, turn it off. But he's he's waiting for good night. So every time I'm praying, he's listening to the. Mm. So that's you know sometimes I ask, why don't you pray? Oh no, I'm too tired. <laughs> okay. But anyway, that's awesome. It's like yeah. me. He likes to do it in the morning, yeah, and you know yeah, by maybe. the night he's yeah, like, yeah, I'll just listen I'll, while you pray. <laughs> I'll send him to you. Yeah. <laughs> But that's, uh, I mean, the, the passage that you pick is loved, and I love how that impacts your life and how you brought to, to light, you, you know, your experience, your testimony, especially for people that, you know, are in trouble in their lives. Um, so we can, you know, sum up here with the faith. Let's start with faith, you know. Uh, Jesus demands, you know, to keep our faith. Faith, regardless, problem, mm-hmm. really high. Faith, keep it right. Whatever, whatever is you know around you, keep your faith high. And to keep our focus, I think that's the other focus. part. Focus, you know, not to have alliteration there, but it it's no matter what is going on, it is so easy to get distracted by, um, Yes, by our phones, by, you know, your own feelings or thoughts or your own your own fears Mm. or. Whatever it is, but if God has called you to something, it says one reason I always kind of cling to this passage, if God has called you to something, then you have to. Almost put blinders on to what is happening around you and to stay focused on that call. That's perfect. I love that. And uh, yeah. Um, so that's what you know Peter experienced at that moment. Second thing is um, um is the is the, you well I mean you just resume the focus. Yeah, that's the second thing that I would yeah. say. So faith and folks, that's that's I mean pretty much what we should do in our lives nowadays. Especially because you know all these things around us, you know, that get us distracted really easy. Really easy. And you can say because you have three kids and you know different ages and you know how they get distracted, but they get really focused when they are, you know, when they want to be. When they yes. want to be. 
Yeah. Why don't you do this, you know, a different way? I don't know. I don't like. Anyway, but uh, Sharon, I think your story is beautiful, and I'm, I'm, I maybe to talk among you know people around here in this community that we are really glad that you uh, waited and you didn't give up. Thank you. And you just yeah. say okay, and then God sent you the right place, and the most important thing, the place that you know you feel comfortable and welcome. Absolutely. So uh, I I speak on behalf of you know high long people that I know them. Some of them I know really well. We have a good relationship with them. You just you know you feel home there. You feel home here. So whatever you need, you know from Enslow Park, you're more than welcome to you know call and and we'll be here for you. Oh, thank you so much. All right. So um, friends, um, this is the end of our interview with uh, Reverend Sharon Bell. Oh my had a huge pleasure to sit down and have this nice conversation and listen to her testimony. I hope you all like it as well. Thank you so much to come, Cheryl. Thank you very much for having me. And if you have any comments, questions, or prayers requests, we would love to hear your thoughts. So please email us to eppcoutreach at gmail.com. And check our website for upcoming events at enslopresbychurch.org. Uh, O-R-G. Uh, Sharon, do you have any social media that you'd like to share? Sure. The church, you can always follow Highland Presbyterian Church on Facebook. Just search Highland Presbyterian Church all together and you'll find it on there. All right. And your services, what are the, the time? 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. And we um, are live on Facebook every day or every Sunday as well. Awesome. Do you have a Sunday school? Yes. Yeah, Sunday school at 10. 10 yes for all ages service at and 11. worship at 11 it's awesome and we have a what i like to call a relaxed traditional church format Ooh. so we have uh, traditional hymns and i wear a robe the choir wears robes when we have the choir but it is still a very informal way to have traditional worship i love that i just love that um and also follow, like, and subscribe in our social media, uh, such as Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, always by Enslow Park Presbyterian Church. Uh, Sharon just gave uh, their Facebook me or their social media, so uh, go there, like, and subscribe so you know the upcoming events, right? Uh, perfect. So thank you so much, Sharon, one more time. It's, yeah, that I was great time. fun. <laughs> Looking forward to talk with you again. Bye.